All right, Choose Women Wednesday is celebrated every year on the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. Now, this year it falls on November 30th, that's today. The day seeks to appreciate support, listen to, and stand up for women. It also attempts to create awareness about the many uh, women working for the uh, working for and successfully running businesses in the world that still thinks a woman's place is at the home. Now the day also celebrates day is celebrated in hopes of countering those old notions and instead of making people realize the potential uh, of the uh, women in the household. Now the day educates both cos customers and businesses on making right choices, uplifting female entrepreneurs, and promoting women-owned um, businesses, right? So, I just finished a project around women, 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 women. <laughs> so, the leading woman show. And I really loved all the conversations around women on that show. Um, it's something around, I mean, what this day really represents, right? The stereotypes, the, the norms, the societal constructs of women, and all of that. And this thing is not unique. People think it's just unique to Africa. It's not unique. It's world. global, right? Mm -hmm. People just see a woman and automatically you have a certain perception of what she's supposed to be like, what, what, she's, allowed to what she's allowed to do or not allowed to do and all of that. I mean, so I'm really particularly happy about this day. You know, choose a woman, support a woman. And that part of supporting women businesses, it's very key. Mm -hmm. Most of the, the issues around women and why they refuse or they stay in abusive um, situations or relationships or whatever is because of financial empowerment. Yeah. So most of them are not financially empowered, empowered to be on their own. And that's why a woman would rather suffer in silence and yeah. eventually yeah. some of them have lost Dying. their lives. Yeah, right? So, I mean, that part of encouraging a female-owned business is very, very key. So if you know any woman out there you have not patronized that today. Me, I have, I have needs. You can send, <laughs> I can send you my account number. But hey, patronize a woman around you today. It goes a really long way, right? Yes, it does. Okay, so ladies, uh, let me start with you, Alera. What's your story? Uh, so my story is regarding Bamiche. So Bamiche's family um, marks her her first posthumous birthday, which means this is her first birthday since she passed on earlier in the year. Um, so, and our family is busy. They're basically asking a lot of questions because, I mean, this the incident happened while she was en, en route um, a BRT bus from Lekki to Oshodi on the 25th of February, where um, she was allegedly raped by the BRT bus driver. And at this time, I mean, Sahara News, rep they're reporting that Lagos Governor Sonwolu has been shielding alleged killer of 22 years old Bamiche and today is the 10th month that she has been she has passed on and they're asking questions where is the bus driver nobody's saying anything about this there's been no um they, they haven't invited the family of Bamiche to even come for the court hearing the, the family mentioned that they had to co go to the courts themselves uninvited and they're asking questions what's happening with the guy is he going to be getting justice is anything going to happen and the question is Lagos State government is aware of this situation and they are choosing not to do anything about it. So what they are asking for is the Nigerian public, files and the regular people that actually fight for human rights to please help in you know figuring out how best they can get justice for their child. Happy posthumous birthday and really really give our warm um, heartfelt regards to the family because it's really not easy for you to start thinking about oh we need justice for Bamiche. You know that's a sad not, thing. It's you really know? it's really crazy. Like it's bad you know with it, you yeah. know who the person is. And now not getting time. closure. Exactly. Yes. Just taking time to actually convict or even to even okay, there's a court hearing and the family is not even present or mm. even aware of this court hearing. I feel like if the Lagos State government know what is going on, it's great that you give the family closure because everybody deserves to know the truth and and everybody deserves to get justice for you know for this type of absolutely, crime absolutely absolutely i mean we'll talk more on this yeah. i mean because again somehow it's somehow tied to the conversation mm, today, yes. why we still have issues of rising cases of you know rape. sexual assault rape and all of that you. you know it wasn't really clear for Bamiche's um case if there was because at some point they said there was um, sexual assault at some point they now said no 
the if, evidence didn't show and all of that. If she wasn't even communicating with somebody mm. while she was in Rio, or while she was nobody in transit, would even nobody would this. even know about this. In fact, they would have probably even lied and absolutely. said she was probably, you yeah, know, it was absolutely. a prostitute or something. Yeah. Okay, so, um, Alero, uh, sorry, um, Mary. Mary, I'll come to you later. Let me, because your story is tied to what we're discussing, yeah. so I'll, I'll leave yours for, for last. My story is actually very funny. I found this video. I don't know if you can quickly play the video. Um, some um, PDP guy, <laughs> I don't even know what it is, is the former chairman of a local government area in, um, I think, Governor Autumn's um, state. I can't remember what state mm. that is now. And he, he was allegedly beaten up because he wore an APC shirt. I mean, sorry, a PDP shirt. So I'm just thinking in this, in my life, <laughs> in this 2023 that we're coming, I mean, like, this is supposed to give you, like, an idea of, of what to expect. Like Ninjas, so I'm people like... should just be careful. In fact, that's why I took the story. If they can quickly pull up the video for me. <laughs> Nigerians are very angry right now. Okay, uh, why are you looking like this? I was given the beating of my life at this campaign already. And uh, we have not known for violence. Which campaign rally in our PDP? This is PDP campaign rally, Zona campaign rally, which is marking the flag of uh, our governor, so we got this information. We got the information that the governor is going to flag with his campaign in Go today. I'm a member of the grassroots movement in Benue State. And then when we got this information, we we felt that no, this is a PDP. The fact that he got the beating of his life. He has not seen a continuing moment. But the thing is, if you watch the video longer, he said, I mean, just because he put on the t shirt and all of that. First what? of all, Nigerians, Nigerians, <laughs> they're like, wait, they've been waiting. You know, when somebody has been suffering in silence, and now they're like, wait, you are. No, you? But, but I think, no, but I think this one is a case of you went to the wrong wrong, camp. Are, wrong Yeah. Place wrong so, but I, I, so the reason I'm saying this is because, again, there is a lot of tension in the air. Especially for people that um, are obedient, people that are whatever, be careful, yeah. right? You know clearly there are some zones that belong to a certain kind of party. Yep. You can't, um, <laughs> you can't, yeah, you can't run away from that fact. Yeah. So try as much as possible to not incite any form of, because sometimes it would be like you're coming to insult them. So I'm just, yeah. the, the reason I'm pulling out those stories is that more of this will happen. Sure. So we need to be careful. Remember the boy that took the flag, the Peter B, the flag bearer, that they almost burnt him to death in Osho. Yes, it was a, a military man that saved his his life, right? Him and his camera guy. So these are like hot beds, right, for setting political parties. Yeah. Don't go into their their camp wearing an opponent's shirt. Mm -hmm. Instead, go neutral or don't go at all. At all. Yeah, just protect yourself. Basically. Protect yourself. All right. So maybe your story. Okay, we have a sexual offense and domestic violence court sitting in Keja, Lagos, has remanded the medical director of Optimal Cancer Care Foundation, Dr. Femi Olaleye, for alleged defilement of his 16-year-old wife's niece, name withheld. The, na the news agency of Nigeria reports that Justice Ramon Oshudi on Wednesday, November 30th, ordered that the defendant be remanded in Ikoyi Correctional Center pending the perfection of his bail. Olalaye is charged with a two-count charge of defilement and sexual assault by penetration. He, however, pleaded not guilty to the charge. Mm. I, I heard that, I saw that part of not guilty. Remember the video that Elsie shared in the group? Yeah, <laughs> which is like, that was him now. Yeah. Not guilty. Funny he, thing is, is that it, is it the funny that? thing is that we've had Dr. Laleye on our show because when we were talking about cervical cancer, right? Um, it's really sad to to watch because again, and this is why I say that I don't know. Mm. There's a psychology. There's a psychology to rape. There's a psychology to sexual molestation and, and assault, and maybe we should start dealing with it because. You would wonder for someone that is you are good looking, you are whatever. You're well to do. You're well to do. You have all the. You have. You, you can have, have anybody you, you have want. You can even pay for it. Do you think get my point? You can have anything. So why would you subject yourself to that? So you know what? We'll do more of that um, when we come back from the break. Uh, we want to discuss, you know, how we can curb um, rape and sexual um, crimes in Nigeria. Stay with us. We'll be right back.